Hi. Today our lesson is on the order of operations. Um, just a little bit of review at the top, and I'm not going to do every single one of these, but I'm going to do quite a few to try and kind of get you into a roll on these since we will be spending two days in this unit. You may get some notes in here that are just done on day one, and then if you are there for day two, maybe you'll be a little bit ahead. Okay, review exponents in case you see them. Remember, 5 to the second power does not mean 5 times 2. It means 5 times 5, which would be 25. 4 to the third, again, is not 4 times 3. It's 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. Okay, 2 to the fifth, you guessed it. Not 2 times 5, but 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 32. And you can always put radicals, excuse me, radicals, exponents into your calculator, okay, with the little caret button that looks kind of like this. So, that, for instance, this one on most calculators would look like that. That's another way you can write it. But that's to help us when we get to order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, you've heard that before. And the thing that people tend to forget is when they get to these last two steps, multiply and divide, add and subtract, those always go left to right. So for instance here, okay, I would do this one first. Or if I was down here, I would do this one first. And sometimes the order can matter on these, so you do have to be careful and go left to right, but only on those last two. It doesn't mean you multiply before you divide. It doesn't mean every time you add before you subtract. They're on the same level as far as that goes. So for instance, when we get down to number one, I see I have an add, a multiply, and a multiply. Well, I know I'm going to do multiply first, but I do the one that's furthest to the left. Now you may be asking, couldn't I just type this whole thing in my calculator? You could. Okay, but notice, to make sure that you know what's going on, because there will be some that going straight to the calculator will mess you up, which is why I'm saying you need to show me a step somewhere instead of just putting it into your calculator. Okay, next one, same idea. I have add, I have multiply, divide, subtract. Well, I know multiply and divide are together, so I go for the one that's furthest to the left. And again, if you get to a point that you can do a couple of steps at a time, that's okay. But you've got to be careful not to get sloppy because if you're sloppy and go too fast, you're just going to have to go back and redo it. And then you're not really saving much time anyway. And then again, left to right. So 15 plus 6 is 21 minus 4 is 17. You're like, I still haven't seen one that I couldn't just do in the calculator. I understand. But again, little things like remembering this minuses here, that makes a difference. You forget that, your whole problem gets messed up. Here, same, you just go left to right. 12 minus 3 is 9, plus 7 is 16. Now some of the problems start to come in that would cause issues if we didn't do them manually. For instance, here, people type this in and they'll get all sorts of weird decimal answers. They'll be like, I'm not getting the same answer you do, why not? If you're going to do a problem like this on your calculator, okay, we need to pretend almost that the denominator is not even there. Like that's my whole problem at the start. So if that's the case, I do my parentheses first. 5 minus 1 is 4 times 6 is going to be 24. And then I just do the opposite. I cover up the numerator. 10 minus 4 parentheses is 6 times 8 is 48. You may say, well, could I distribute there first? You could, but it's just going to make more work. And as it goes with fractions. We always need to make sure we reduce fractions down. Now, maybe you didn't know 24 went into each of those. In that case, you're going to need to make sure divide a smaller number that you know. Maybe if you get 24 over 48 and you say, well, I know 2 goes into both of those. So get you down to 12 or 24. And you're like, well, I know 3 goes into both of those. 4 over 8. Oh, and 4 goes into each of those. And you just work your way down. Yeah, it takes a little time, but you're getting the right answer. That's the key here. Okay, number five, what comes first? Uh, looks like the exponent. So five squared is ten, right? Oh, you better be screaming at your computer screen. No, five squared is twenty-five. And here's where maybe you can do a couple of steps. Multiply becomes before subtract. Thirty-seven, left to right, minus eight is twenty-nine. And you start to see what's going on here. Now, here come more of the problems where if you get calculator dependent, they are going to get you. I I'm going to guarantee it. 
Seven's a big one. Most people just type 12 plus 20 divided by eight times two in there and get themselves an all. Sorry about the delay, I had to go grab my calculator so we can kind of see what happens here. So let's say I go to the calculator. So I've got 12 plus 20, a fraction's just like divide, so I typed in divided by eight, divided by two, just like it's there, and I hit enter. I get 13.25, and then Mr. Hardy comes up and says, no, that's not quite right. The answer's 17. You're like, how's that possible? Well, let's take a look. Here's this fraction again. We said before, we look at it in pieces. So we're going to forget about the 20 for a minute. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Division, 20 divided by 4 is 5, and I get 17. Now you're like, well, what did the calculator do wrong? Well, the calculator didn't do anything. It followed order of operations. It did its first divide, and then it did another divide, and then it added. If I wanted to do this in the calculator, here's how it would have to look. I would have to make sure that when I went to do my division part that I told the calculator I want this part done first. Okay? Because then it'll do that part and then it'll do the division and then it'll do the add. But you have to tell the calculator that. The calculator will only do what you tell it to. So take a second. Let's see if we can do this right on 8. Because again, don't get sucked in. I want the calculator to do what's up top first, so I have to put that in parentheses. Then I want the calculator, before it divides, to do everything that's down here. So if I just hit divide by 8 right now, divided by 2, it's going to divide by 8. That's not what I want. So let me back up. So I want it to do all the work in the numerator first. That's here. All the work in the denominator second. That's here. Then give me the answer. Okay. So we end up with 32 divided by 4, which is 8. And even if you just showed me this as your one step, well, I put the parentheses around and then hit enter. That's fine. Okay, and that's all we're going to be doing on this side. Now, just to prove a point on a couple of these in the back, 10 is kind of similar to what we were doing. So let's jump up to 11, see what happens when this gets a little weird. Parentheses we know we got to do first. So 40 minus 13 is 27. We know here... I'm going to put the parentheses right on my paper. I want to do what's in the denominator first. You're like, ooh, that's a fraction. Now, how are we going to deal with this? Fractions are easier to multiply times fractions. So how can I make a whole number turn it into a fraction? What number do I have to put it over? Hopefully, you just said 1. Okay, I can put that over 1 because once I do that, now, whenever I have a fraction over a fraction, I can just multiply across. And I'll take a look at this a second just to see if there's two numbers that will divide in, or maybe I'll try math, enter, enter on the calculator. And I see there's not one in this case. So I can get a fraction for an answer. That's okay. Same thing going on in the next one. Again, just look at this part. Get your parentheses in there because, again, I'm just going to do the numerator first or the calculator. We're not going to do it correct with our order of operations. 12 minus 7 is 5 over 6. 15 minus 8 is 7, but just like we had over here, I need it to be a fraction. Once I do that, multiply across. Double check either in your head or by a calculator. Can I make it any simpler? And I find out I can't, and I'm done. Okay. Now, when we take that a step further as we move down the page. Evaluating. Evaluate is just a fancy word for substitute. Okay, so they're telling me the things again I want to show a step. So 5, my C value is 8, my D value is 10. Now what do I have to do first? Parentheses, because distributes just like multiply actually. So here if I do 8 minus 10 is negative 2, then I'm done. So as you work through these, Whenever you see something squared, we're going to want to use parentheses in case we run into a negative sometime. We'll get into that a little later. Make sure your D's get substituted in for 10's and your C's for 8's. And again, I use parentheses when I'm plugging numbers in just because it reminds me I'm multiplying and like this was in 2810. Exponents first. And then you're like, well, do I have to rewrite all of this? Well, I see subtract, I see add, but I see a lot of multiplying. So if I do all my multiplying, I 
could be 30. Maybe 80 times 2 is 160. See, it pays all those years that I keep doing all this multiplying. 94 minus 160. Oh boy, 66. But it's negative because it's a bigger number to being taken. Okay, and that's how these are going to work. You've just got to make sure as you're plugging in that you're taking your time. Okay, one more. 15. So 9 minus C to the 13 minus D. Well, 9 minus 8 is 1. 13 minus 10 is 3. Now, what's 1 to the third power? Remember, that's 1 times 1 times 1, not 1 times 3. So that's going to be 1, and we're good for that section. So, so far, so good. And again, down here, we just have some more of the same type. Don't let a decimal even get you going. Okay, it works just the same, but remember, when you see those fraction bars, we're doing just everything in one portion at a time here. So 2 times 5 is 10. And then 12.25 minus 10. If you're not sure, let the calculator help you out. Switch it up. 3 plus 2 is 5. You're like, ooh, this is going to be a messed up number. Yes, it is. That's why we just go ahead and punch that one into the calculator. Move this up a little where you can actually see the answer. Okay, you can get decimals. You can get fractions for answers. Don't let that stuff freak you out. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, 18. We're doing what's in the parentheses first. Multiply comes before this does. So, 24. But you're like, well, divide. I can simplify that. What's 15 divided by 3? 5. Still got parentheses. Got to do that first. And finally, we get that set. Okay, that's going to fix us up for this side. We will head to the other side. We're almost there. Now as they get bigger, does that mean they get harder? Not necessarily. It just means you've got to take even more caution. So for instance here, we just want to deal what's up here in the green at the start. So I start looking. I'm like, okay, exponents. 5 squared is 25. 4 times 5 is 100. Now then I do 100 minus 4. No. Multiply comes before subtract. So that's 100 minus 12, which ends up being 88. So you notice I did everything up in the numerator first. If you do one piece at a time, you're less likely to make errors. Now, when I get down to the denominator, I take a look. And again, I want to take care of what's in the parentheses first. I'll fix up my pen here a little bit. There we go. So 4 times 5 is 20. So I have 20 plus 2, which is 22. Okay, making little notes there as you go works okay. 4 times 22 is 88, and shockingly enough, all that stuff just turned into 1. Amazing. Seems kind of crazy, but it works. So again, take your time. Okay, let's look at this big honker over here. All this in the numerator is what we want to take care of first. Again, pieces. I have an exponent. So I have 2 times 16 minus 8 divided by 2. So I'm like, all right, so what, let's see here. I got multiply and I got divide. So 2 times 16 is 32. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And I've cleaned up that part. So then I switch and I say, okay, I got parentheses down here. So 5 plus 2 is 7 times 2 is 14. And can I reduce 28 divided by 14? Yeah, 14 actually goes into 28. It goes in twice. Just a couple more down here and evaluate just to be sure. And we should be ready to go with these. I definitely want to hit up another fractional one. So let's take a look. At 25, and we're also going to take a look see at 26. So, as we take a look at 25 and 26, I've gone ahead and I've plugged in the values for A, B, and C. Again, we like to use parentheses just to remind us, you know, that we're substituting these numbers in. Again, when you're doing either of these, you want to look up 
piece at a time. Okay, 5 times 7 is 35. Okay, that was pretty simple up top. Down below, again, be careful. Multiply first. 3 times 6 is 18. 5 times 2 is 10. And sometimes you are going to get numbers that don't simplify anymore. Okay, I'm done. That's okay. Don't freak out. Think you've done something wrong necessarily. Same thing when we get to 26. 7 times 2 is 14. Plus 7 is 21. Over 6. This one does reduce though. What can I divide into both of those? 3. 7 over 2 and we're set. So we've done quite a few examples here. I think you're pretty good to go for these couple of days, but if you have any questions, just let me know.